Well, greetings and salutations, everybody. Welcome to AMC Movie News. My name is John Campia, Editor-in-Chief of AMC Movie News, and this is my little editorial on how to properly score a movie. Now, where this came from for me is that this has happened my entire professional career in doing movie blogging and movie punditry online, but it's especially been noticeable the last four or five or six months. And here's what I'm talking about. I would see a movie and I'd do a review of it and I'd say, you know, I really quite enjoyed it, uh, this, 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 and I'd give it a 7 out of 10. Inevitably, what would happen is I would get some people tweeting me or writing me saying, John, why did you give that movie such a bad score? First you said you liked it and then you give it something as bad as a 7. And, and I would say like, well, wait a minute, I, I, I gave it a 7 out of 10. What's wrong with that? Well, John, my friends would say to me, that's like giving it a C or something like that. That's not good. Or let's take, for example, a, a recent example of this, uh, AMC's own John Schnepp. We did a review for Avengers Age of Ultron and he ended up settling on giving the film an eight out of 10. And then I read online and in some chat boards and stuff like that, yeah, John Schnepp didn't really like it that much. He said Avengers Age of Ultron was meh. It's like, he, 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 gave, he gave it an eight out of 10. What on earth were we talking about? And it also kind of stems from this thing that I've talked before about how we kind of live right now in the 10 mentality, which what I've really noticed online, especially uh, whether it's in chat boards, whatever, is that if somebody even just likes a movie a lot, their instant, their thing is 10. Any, anything that is good deserves 10. 10, 10, 10, 10, everybody gets a 10. It's like Oprah giving away cars. You get a 10 and you get a 10 and even you, Michael Bay, you get a 10. Everybody seems to want to give out 10s. So that's where this is kind of sort of the started my idea about doing this little editorial on how to properly score a movie. But also let me say this before we get into it. The title of this video is kind of facetious, how to properly score a movie. The reality is scoring movies is a lot like movies in and of themselves. It's all subjective. So whether you like to score a movie out of seven buckets of popcorn, or you like to score a movie out of four stars, or you like to score a movie out of 10 like I do, or you like to score it out of five bubble gums on the floor in front of you, or whatever your you know metric for measurement is, the reality is as much like movies, it's subjective. There's no real right way to do it. There's no real wrong way to do it. As a matter of fact, we all think that the way we score movies is the right way because if you didn't think it was the right way, you would do it another way. And so there's nothing wrong with that. Also, whatever criteria you have for scoring a movie, that's totally individual and that's up to you. So me saying the proper way to score a movie is kind of facetious because there's nothing wrong with the way you do it. It's not necessarily any better or any worse than the way I do it. I just want to lay out for you the way I score movies and why I think it's the right way to do it and why it works for me. That doesn't mean your way isn't the right way to do it and that it should work for you. I'm just laying it out for you the way I do it. So with all that being said, let me get into why I believe the proper way to score a movie is the way I do it. Just like all of us think the way we score movies is the right way to do it. But the reason my way uh, is the way that I choose to do it is I generally score movies out of 10. You all know that, right? I usually give movies a score from zero to 10. And when I host like uh, AMC spoiler reviews or regular reviews with the crew, I ask them, what do you give it out of 10? And here's how I score things out of 10 and why I think the 10 thing works. Let's take it, for example, the 10 itself. Let's look at a, at a line. On this side, we have the zero, okay? Absolute zero. On this side, we have 10. The 10 represents this is as good as it gets. It doesn't get any better than this. This is the pinnacle of what a film can and should be. Now, as a result, since that's my kind of definition of what a 10 is, very few films in my life, I don't think I've given any more than nine, maybe even a few less, uh, perfect 10s in my lifetime. Maybe I've gone 10 or 11, but I don't think I have anyway. The fact of the matter is, just the point is that if 10 represents as good as it gets, this is the pinnacle to which all movie making should aspire to be, then by definition, that should be a fairly small number and we shouldn't be too generous about throwing out the number 10 if we're saying this represents as good as it gets. Now let's go to the other end of the scale, the zero. The zero represents to me, this is pretty much as bad as it gets. You would, you would have a hard time making anything worse if you tried purposefully to set out to make the worst possible thing you can. So movies like, yeah, you know, for me personally, uh, Highlander Part Two. Um, Catwoman, 
uh, Battlefield Earth. Uh, these films to me like represent pretty much as bad as it gets, but because like we said with the 10 represents pretty much as good as it gets, since the zero pretty much represents as bad as it gets, that should also be given out very sparingly. I think as far as wide release Hollywood films go, I think I've only given out like five zeros in my lifetime. I might've given out a couple more, but I think for, for my personal tastes, I think I've only given out about zero. So I start with this scale, zero to 10, 10 representing as good as it gets, therefore a very small number of films should actually hit that if we're saying it's as good as it gets, and zero represents pretty much as bad as it gets. Once again, your criteria may be different, I'm simply here to explain why I do it the way I do it. Okay, so if 10 is as good as it gets, and zero represents as bad as it gets, to me, the five, the five should represent to you pretty much the tipping point on whether you could take or leave the movie. You know, if zero is as bad as it gets and 10 is as good as it gets, then right in the middle should theoretically be, forget what you score things in school. We're not talking about your grades on a paper and what should count for acceptable or not. We're talking about on this scale, right? Just this pure numeric scale. If this is as good as it gets, this is as bad as it gets, the, num the number five should represent your tipping point. So for me personally, if I come out of the movie and I go, you know what guys, I I'm, I'm totally torn on this. There, yeah, there were a couple things that were redeeming about the movie, but it also had these things that were bad about it. I just don't know if I can recommend the movie or not. That's kind of what to me the five represents. As good as it gets, as bad as it gets, Guys, I don't know which way to go on this. It's totally, whether you to say you should see it or not see it, to say it's a bad movie or a good movie, I'm right there on the fence. That should be what the five represents. Now, that being said then, if this is as bad as it gets, this is as good as it gets, right down the middle is the tipping point for whether you think something is good or bad, worth watching, not worth watching, glad you saw it, wish you hadn't seen it. Then now, either way you go on that scale, should be determined by how much you did like it or did not. So for instance, let's say I saw a movie and I'm like, you know what, um, not a great film, but it did this wrong, this wrong, and this wrong, but it also did this right, this right, and this right, and you know what, the action in it for me just kind of pushes it over the edge to the good side. I'm gonna say I'm glad I saw this movie, I'm gonna give it a six, right? So the six for you, or at least for me, should represent this is, it, it's gone past that, that middle mark, that tipping point, that sitting on the fence pole. The six represents going towards the 10. Now you're closer to the 10 than you are to the zero, and now you're saying, you know what, it, not great, but all other things being equal, I liked watching this movie. Boom, you're into the six territory, or the 5.5, the 6.5, whatever. If you're like, hey, look, man, there were some redeemable things. This performance was good. This, the idea for the story is pretty good, but bad performances, bad execution, totally uh, predictable. You know, it, it could have gone either way, but for me, it just it just didn't click. It didn't work. I follow up. That might make you give it a four or a 3.5 or 4.5. You know, if that five is the middle and you just ever so slightly on the negative side, you go that way. So if you're looking at it that way, the zero is bad as it gets, the 10 is good as it gets, the five is the splitting point, you lean a little bit this way, you go a little bit this way, you lean a little bit that way, you go a little bit that way. Now we're talking positives and negatives. Then for somebody like me, if you understand that's how I personally grade a movie, once again, I'm not saying this is the way you need to do it, I'm saying if you understand this is the way I do it, then when I come out and I say I give something a seven, then you gotta understand, that is pretty damn far from the zero and getting closer to that 10. Therefore, that must be a film that I that I truly, truly enjoyed. Hey, I, I really like that movie. You know, because that's going from the five. You're moving now two more points over from that five. I, I really liked the movie. I thought it was good. Yeah, I did this wrong and I did this wrong. That keeps it from being a great film, but I really enjoyed it. It was quite nice to watch um, and the positives outweighed the negatives to me and it worked. So when you hear me give a movie a seven or somebody on the NC movie crew give it a seven, we're not saying meh, we're saying, yeah, actually, that's a lot closer to a 10 than it is to a zero. We, we quite liked it. And for us to give a movie a seven, that's actually pretty good praise. Now, then we get into like when we start seeing movies, man, I really enjoy it. Like, I thought that movie was great. Now we're getting into eights. Then when you start moving out, it's like, no, man, beyond great. This movie is freaking awesome. Now you're getting into the nines and, you know, maybe your nine fives. And then when you get to those pinnacles, you know, those godfathers, 
um, those Shawshank Redemptions, those for me up, the movie up, um, that's when you get into your tens and those should be few and far between. And as long, if you go south of five, then you're saying, no, this isn't a good movie. As long as you're north of five, you're saying, yeah, this is a movie worth watching. So to highlight once again, um, I just wanted to do this little editorial because, you know, some confusion that people seem to have when, when they hear me giving scores and, and, and coming up with saying things like, you know, oh, John gave it a seven, that means he didn't like it. Schnepp gave that thing an eight, that means he thought it was meh. Couldn't be further from the truth. Um, so when we get something a four, that means we're saying, nah, if we get something a three, that means it's horrible. If we get something a 6.5, that's not me or my crew saying, oh man, this movie isn't worth watching. No, as a matter of fact, if we say 6.5, that means we think it's worth watching. That means we've gone like 1.5 full over this way. And you know, it's funny when we talk about numbers like one or 1 1.5 differences because there have been times when, I remember this one example, this happened several times, like I gave one movie an 8.5 that I really, that means me, Having understood how I just explained it, if I give someone an 8.5, that means I thought it was great. And I gave something an 8.5 and somebody wrote to me, John, you're being way too critical. I, I gave that movie a nine. It's like, wait, wait a second, you just gave it 0 0.5 more than me, but I'm being super critical and yours is the right score. I, I'll never understand that. But anyway, that's just the way I see properly scoring a movie. Like I said, it's all subjective. You have your own criteria of doing it. But I think if we all had like a scale like that, I think we'd all be more on the same page and understanding where each one of us is coming from when we actually say a score. Because as of right now, when somebody says that gave it a seven, maybe in their mind, that means the movie's a total failure and anything less than a 10 is not good. You know, so I kind of wish we had a little bit more of a standard way of measuring films together, but I totally understand why we don't. It's all subjective. Your way may be better than mine, but that's the way I see it. Anyway, thanks a lot for joining me, this guys, for this little weekend editorial on how to properly score a movie. Don't forget to subscribe to us on our YouTube channel. Keep up to date with all of our daily AMC movie talk shows, our weekend AMC mailbag shows, AMC Heroes with John Schnepp, AMC Jedi Council with Christian Harloff, AMC Coming Soon, AMC Rewind, AMC Indie Spotlight, so much stuff to keep up to date with. And don't forget too, if you would like to listen to these shows instead of watching them, you can follow our podcast feed below. So that'll do it for me, guys. My name is John Campia for AMC Movie News, and until next time, bye bye